Hey there, this is Ross Walters, harmonica player, um, and I'm here with the whiteboard. We're going to talk about a couple things today. I want to talk about key signatures, and I also want to talk about something that I call harmonica ergonomics. Um, so, here we go. Here's, we see this set of notes here, going from starting from E and going up to E and then going back. It looks like some kind of scale. I want to make this an E major scale, so in order to do that we got to add some sharps to it. We have an F sharp, we have a G sharp, and we have a C sharp in this key, and the D is sharped. And there we have an E major scale. Um, and I know I don't have any note values assigned to these note heads. I also don't have any bar lines. Uh, so we're just going to pretend this is all one measure. Whenever you notate like this, any sharps you put are good through the rest of the measure. So this is actually legal for me to not fill those in. Um, it's perfectly legal. Nobody panic. Um, there's a musical shortcut in addition to what I just mentioned that's a, a little bit more efficient and that's called the key signature where instead of putting sharps just in the first half of the measure you can just put it at the beginning of each stanza and that saves a lot of time and it saves some eyes I think for the student who's reading the music um, if I'm writing a piece of music myself out on some notation paper I just write the key signature once um, but if you ever see uh, like a professionally printed out piece of music, you'll see the key signatures showing up at the beginning of each stanza, like that. Anyway, so here's how we do the key signature. I, remember, I said there's an F sharp. That's that's actually where we start when we in when we're in the sharp keys. We always start with F, and we can't just put this in any kind of random order. There's a specific way to do it. We move up by fifths. So we have F sharp, move up a fifth to C sharp, move up a fifth to G sharp, one more fifth to D sharp. So there you go, pardon my penmanship, but you get the idea. So here's the thing, musicians eventually learn that four sharps means the key of E major, and that's just common knowledge amongst musicians. Um, this also represents a minor key. This could possibly be C sharp minor. Um, but if you want to determine what the major key is, what you do is, there's a little trick, you take the last sharp in the key signature and that that note right there is a half step below the key. So that's D sharp which is a half step below E which is, voila, the key signature. Um, Let's look at this next line down. I want to make this an E flat major scale. So this has got to be flat. The A is flat and the B is flat. Um, so to translate that into a key signature, we just um, we always start with B flat with the flat keys. B flat, and then instead of moving up by fifths like we did with the sharp key, we move up by fourths. We go B flat. E flat, we move up another fourth to A flat. And there's your key signature for the key of E flat. Um, do I even mention this thing about key signatures and the circle of fourths? Let's, um, let's make another video out of that. I have a nice circle up here, but um, we'll do that on the other side of the whiteboard. I'll make a big circle. I want to talk about this harmonica ergonomics thing. I don't know what else to call it. Um, it's just the fact that some easy, some keys are easier and flow better than other keys, and there's a specific reason for that. Um, if you played both of these scales, you would have a physical experience of the E flat major scale feeling smoother. E major so 
what's going on has to, a bunch to do with changing breath direction. And the key of E, we're changing breath direction. I don't know how to notate this. Put a dot here or something. We're changing breath direction here. So, uh, A to B is the only spot so far where we haven't changed breath direction. B to C sharp. We changed breath direction there. And C sharp to D sharp, we changed breath direction. And we changed breath direction on every single note except for these two. And so, um, it gives the player like a choppy feeling of like inhale, exhale, you know. Uh, here, we're using, we're going to use the alternate F, use the slide for F. And so we got a draw note here, we change breath direction there. Uh, then all these, blow, blow, blow. All those three in a row are blow notes. We change direction here. We're going to use the slide alternate C for, for that note C. And all of the rest of the notes are draw notes. So you can see a big difference. Um, changing breath direction on almost every note as opposed to changing breath direction only once or twice to produce this scale right there and right there so um, <clears throat> there's a reason for that it's just a thing to be aware of and not any kind of excuse to steer clear of the key of E uh, because the key of E the funny thing about the harmonica is that you can find what you think is an awkward key and then as an improviser you find all these other cool things that that key can do because uh, say you're even improvising around in the key of E we got that nice slide turn there uh, also improvising in E we have like one of the most comfortable minor pentatonic scales on the harp That's a very comfortable set of notes. Um, that's the minor pentatonic scale. So, um, yeah, it's just funny. The major scale can be choppy, but the minor pentatonic flows so nicely. And we have the nice slide turn in that key and everything. So, um, but a thing to be aware of, harmonica ergonomics. And this is also a big... Um, vote in the direction of using the alternate F and C when it makes sense to. Um, this just smooths out this scale considerably. Anyway, that's all I want to say right now about key signatures and harmonica ergonomics. I, I'll do a separate video on key signatures and the circle of fifths. Alright, thanks.